The Maverick Plan is a state plan of the university advertising the university, which would soon open, and there, were just, there, were, there was a written description on the back um, that talked about the features of the university, including its novel water supply, water delivered um, from mountain springs to fountains located behind uh, faculty residences. Um, it sounded probably a lot more glamorous than it really was. The concept is we're in a watershed. We're in the same hydraulic unit code area, that's what they call it, like a huck zone. And so when, if, if we can treat this water here, it's actually cleaner for when it eventually gets downstream. How often do you contemplate water quality? Our guest today is passionate about bringing awareness to this critical topic. Join us as we learn about UVA water systems and the importance of stormwater management. Come on. Um, roughly 25% of all the water at UVA is used in producing this chilled water for air conditioning. The hospital that is right next to this plant has a water reclaim system where we're harvesting the water, the rainwater that falls on the, the building, as well as some of the condensate off of the air handling units and bringing that back to the plant to help make up water there as well. So this is water that would normally just go down the drain and we're using it before it gets evaporated into the air. So it's really kind of a double benefit, water savings and energy savings, and of course, um, really good for the environment and our climate. So Dawson, we're here at the Dell. Tell us why this was created in 2003. Back when they were constructing the John Paul Jones Arena, they decided, well, you're going to need about 20% of the space for stormwater management facilities, and they didn't have the physical space to actually locate it. So they said, well, what are we going to do about that? We still want to build the facility. So they looked at this spot. It's a little bit upstream. We're in the Meadow Creek watershed, and this is a perfect spot to mitigate all that stormwater that's going to be going to that site eventually anyway. And talk about the role of the Dell. What, what happens here? Break it all down. It's a multifunctional landscape. There, it's, a, it's a park, but it, most importantly, it serves as a, a spot that treats stormwater. Water that comes down from Observatory Mountain comes through a stream that was recently daylighted. And what does that mean? Well, they brought it to the surface. It wasn't a pipe, and then they just brought it back up to the surface, reconnected it to the floodplain, and so it, it winds its way down for about 1,100 feet. It's augmented by a couple different biofilters or bioretention areas, and then it dumps into this four bay right here, and all the particles that the pollutants in the sediment settles out in the four bay, spills over into the main bay of the, of the pond, the dell itself, and then it eventually gets collected in the outlet structure and works its way on down through this, the underground system. So, and so really, what are the benefits of, of, of doing it this way? So why, why is this better for water? Why is this better for water quality? There's a lot of natural processes that happen with the stream itself. So as water's traveling through the stream, as it's meandering through the stream, it's dropping out a lot of those particles, that, that, those pollutants that happen to be picked up. And then once it gets to the four bay, it's, it's, it's a perfect place for that, that settling to occur. So it's, it's a bigger, wider area, and, and the particles start moving slower. So when you have those pollutants, it gives it a chance to actually settle out and filter out. And then when it gets to the uh, actual big pond, it's, it gets even more opportunity for the particles to set out all those pollutants. And here, it's a whole lot easier to maintain this and clean this out than it would be to clean out the large pond itself. And so just tell us just a little bit about the history of water management at UVA. The history at UVA was similar to everywhere else in the country uh, and the world, I think, at the time. There was a lot of just pipes that were used. They, the idea was to get rid of the water as fast as possible. Let's collect it up, let's get it away from the buildings, our properties, put it in a pipe, send it away, get it into our streams uh, as fast as possible. And we realized that that wasn't necessarily a good idea because you, you know, you're collecting all that water and it's shooting down to a stream at really high velocities and you're going to cause some erosion and then if it's not mitigated properly you're going to cause some downstream flooding. And then on top of that when it rains water that runs off and goes towards your stream or wherever, it's going to pick up pollutants, it's going to pick up your sediment, it's going to pick right. up phosphorus, nitrogen, fertilizer, uh, and that kind of stuff, oils and grease, and that's not good for aquatic life and ultimately for drinking water. Right, right. So we have changed now in the way we're we're thinking we're, we're not going to do that anymore. We want to infiltrate, we want to get that water back into the ground as fast as possible. We want to treat the water on site, um, recharge the groundwater, and, and make it a little bit cleaner before we actually do have to send it downstream. Yeah. So the original um, piped water supply system seems to have been Jefferson's idea. 
it was not invented from whole cloth. It was, it was sort of an obvious idea. Find a conduit, find a water source, and run the water via gravity to where you want it to be. Um, putting it into place was another matter because there were very few people, if anybody locally, who had an understanding to, as to how to construct wooden logs, or wooden pipes out of logs, how to construct cisterns, how to properly waterproof them. Jefferson had done some of this at Monticello. The, it, it was figured out in, in, in fairly short time here. A lot of this sort of ties in with Jefferson's way of thinking, of doing things. Talk about, talk about the correlation between this and some of the practices or beliefs of Thomas Jefferson. So the Dell is in a way a realization of one of Jefferson's visions. He wanted to have this outdoor landscape related learning laboratory and his vision was actually to have it closer to Nameless Field which is a little bit closer to uh, the rotunda because he liked planting different things and trying how different plants would work in, in the soils and that never actually came to fruition but here uh, through the stormwater management pond here we're filtering water but the way it's planted we plant it in three different regions to represent Virginia so you have mountainous type of plants in the upper region then there's the Piedmont zone and then all the plants from just beyond where we're standing to the edge of the pond right there are the coastal type plants. Talk about why stormwater management is just, it's so important to you. You're very, very passionate about this, about educating people about it, about making people aware of the importance of, of it. Why? Well, arguably water is our most precious resource. And that speaks to me, hopefully it speaks to everyone. But what a lot of people don't know is that the amount of fresh water that's actually available for us to drink is only about 2.5 percent of what's in on, in the on the world in the world right now. So, um, yeah, we the more you know to treat it well, the better it is for all of us. Yeah, and this site too is just so lovely. So you're you're there are so many different things that are going on here. You have recreation. There are people who fish here, mm -hmm. people who study here. Talk about some at UVA. A, a couple of the different departments carry on studies here. Yes. It's pretty neat actually, the uh, environmental science department comes down here, they do water sampling, uh, and then there's a, you've got uh, landscape architects who study the lines and, and how it ties into the landscape. You also have civil engineers who do surveying and, and that sort of thing here too. So it's, it ties in with that Jefferson Learning Laboratory, again, all those different facets come together. And you, you decided, because you're so passionate about this, that you helped put together a film the story, story of Water at UVA is part of the Bicentennial Celebration. Right. Tell us a little bit about the film and why you did it. Well, we, because we were celebrating the Bicentennial, I was thinking about all the different ways that we've been, creative and innovative ways that we've been dealing with stormwater and water management over the years. And I figured there's, we've been doing a lot of great things, so maybe this is a good chance to highlight some of our accomplishments and then also point out some of our goals that we have for the future. At the University of Virginia, we've been changing our focus to stormwater, trying to get away from the situation where stormwater is a waste product that we need to get rid of, to something that is a resource that we can take advantage of. We're, we're constantly looking at ways that we can mimic nature in terms of how, how you would normally expect a water system to function. So if we can channel that water into systems that infiltrate it, evaporate it, or for other uses for irrigation, then, then we are really helping the environment all downstream. Each of the shapes shown on the map is a chill water loop where we send cooling out to the facilities and bring it back to take the heat out. Uh, if we zoom into the health system, which is the loop we're looking at today, that provides cooling to the hospital, research areas, patient care, non-patient care. We're sending chill water out at 42 degrees. We're getting it back somewhere around 60 degrees and consuming a lot of water in the process to evaporate all the heat that we're cooling out on the loop. What we found when we built the plant that there was a very robust stream going through the site. Kind of an aha moment hit everybody and it's like, we need water for the plant. What if we were to take this water from the stream and use it to make up water for our plant? So we're intercepting that water because it was flooding our basement, the whole construction site. And, it, and we're getting about five gallons per minute, which maybe doesn't sound like a whole lot, but that's about two and a half million gallons a year in water that we get from the spring that helps make up the water to our chiller plant. So talk about some of the best management practices that you all have here at UVA. We have probably close to 144 active BMPs on, on grounds now. We've got about 20 in design 
or under construction currently. But there is, uh, best managed practices are not just stormwater ponds that we're familiar with. There's, there's green roofs, there's permeable pavers, extended detention, biofilters or bioretention areas. Um, but there, we have most everything that you can almost imagine for, as far as BMPs are concerned at UVA. And what would you like people to think about stormwater management after they watch this? What would you like them to, to take away? Well, a lot of times it's our job to have signage near a, a facility like this or a bioretention facility to, to communicate to people that that's actually what this is. This is a working landscape. It's actually work doing something to clean the water because otherwise it's just a pretty pond. But it can be a pretty pond and doing something at the same time. Just like for bioretention facilities, you walk by it sometimes, it just looks like a landscape bed, but it's more than that. It's actually doing something. So when you walk by, it would be nice to say, oh yeah, that is a stormwater management facility. You can, you can start to recognize it after a while. What can we do, all of our viewers watching the show, to have a more positive impact on as, stormwater management? As a homeowner, I mean, you can do a lot of the like, common sense type things. So just, first and foremost, don't pour anything down a storm drain or directly into a stream. But you can do some, some things at home that make sense too. Like when you're washing a car, don't let all your runoff just go right into the drain. Maybe go off into the grass, wash, you know, wash your car in the grass, or just pick up after your pets. That's a good one too. And then on the water conservation side of things, you can just turn off the faucet a little bit while you're brushing your teeth or shaving or something like that, save a little bit of the water that way. When the university was constructed, um, late 18 teens, early 1820s, um, it was actually constructed with a centralized water supply. There was a whole series of cisterns scattered around um, the edges of the lawn. Water was piped from springs on Observatory Hill to an underground brick vaulted chamber that still exists. And from that chamber was pumped by a steam power to tanks in the attic of the rotunda. And the water was largely to be used for fire suppression. It was the insurance policy of the university. 